Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott from the Nimson Fugs Spoken Word Record Label. Uh, welcome to tonight's Insta session. I'm very excited to be welcoming Mary Dickens tonight for some relaxed uh, conversation and poetry. Um, I set up these Insta sessions uh, right at the start of lockdown just because um, it seemed to present an opportunity. It's, it's, it's opened a couple of barriers in terms of being able to contact people from all over the UK and at relatively short notice. And um, and it's also provided some great content for people um, during the lockdown as well, not just my gigs, obviously, but Insta gigs and Facebook gigs and all that in general. So, yeah, I've been really excited to do these and I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to have some wonderful poets uh, join me so far. I'm very excited about the fact that Mary's joining me tonight. Um, so Mary Dickens uh, started writing poetry when she was four years old. And ever since then, it's been one of her main passions and her main uh, support networks through life. Um, she started performing 10 years ago at gigs and slams and festivals. She was a regular at the legendary night Bangs Head the Gun. Uh, she's appeared on TV and radio through the Nas uh, Nationwide Building Society ad campaign, uh, which links with her work with a poetry takeaway, which she still does a lot. Um, in 2017, she set up the Poems Not Pills project, which looked to use poetry um, as a mental health um, tool. Uh, because some people are too quick to prescribe stuff and actually it's a shortcut and it's not helpful in the long run. I'm sure Mary would be able to tell you much more about it and much more eloquently as well. Um, and her debut pamphlet, Happiness FM, was published by Burning Eye Books in April this year. Um, I love watching Mary perform and I'm sure you will as well. So, this is always a bit when I'm nervous because I'm, I'm not very good at tech. All right, Vic. Hi there. Oh. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good. That's the bit I get nervous about, like it's actually arriving, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, That's that in-between bit where you've accepted it and it's just like, look, yeah, yeah. But it's all good. It's worked a treat. Good, good. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Thank you for asking me. Um, it's nice. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, I love the poems that you did as part of the Live Wire Leeds event a few yeah. weeks back and you know, I've seen stuff uh, relating to Happiness FM, so yeah, I'm really happy that you were up for doing it. Um, how have you been feeling about the book so far? Um, it's been brilliant, really. I'm really happy that something good happened at a time when everything else was pretty shit. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's been a challenge. I, I'm, you know, I'm all over the place at the moment in different, um, on different streams, and that's been interesting. Um, possibly got to places of the you know to bits of the country that I wouldn't have reached otherwise actually uh so yeah. it's all been interesting interesting is the word I think um yeah 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 <laughs> there have been a lot of uh, silver linings I think obviously nobody would have wished this situation to happen no. but like you said you performing at the live where Leeds event and I've, I've, I've managed to ask poets from Scotland and Bristol yeah. and also so like yeah it, it, there have been some positives I think it's um, you know, it makes yeah. makes it more accessible because for lots of reasons people can't travel, and you know the fact that you you can do. I'd like to keep this a bit anyway when if ever we go back to live performances because I think it's been good for a lot of people actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so you've been doing quite a lot of gigs, haven't you? Because obviously Happiness FM came out in April. So right at the start of lockdown, really. So, um, so like, all of us that have had books published in that period, look, have our work cut out. So we're lots of gimmicky things we're trying to think of and freebies and all sorts of things. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least it, I suppose if it forces you to think outside the box, like, you know, it's, I suppose it it's does. a good thing in the long run. It does, um, it does. But, you know, it's not the same as going somewhere and being able to um, sell your books. To real people no and, of course you know. and like i said in the intro you were a regular at bang said the gun weren't you like which is such an iconic night and it's such an intimate and electric night like you can't replicate that online can you but well i don't know i think you've been doing a fair job matt you know i think the special <laughs> the live wire session was the nearest that i've got to it in terms of virtual experience oh cool um because uh, that felt really comfortable and nice um but um no, it's strange because you you know you you're saying things at a screen and um, you know, nothing's coming back very much. But, you know, it is. Yeah. I feel like you're a bit mad, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm a bit mad. 
<laughs> and um, yeah. I used to get paranoid when I was traveling to a gig and I was like speaking my poems to myself and worried that people would look at me and think I was talking to myself. But compared to this, that's that's nothing. Yeah. This is just, yeah. So, <laughs> no, budding. <laughs> and Burning Eye, your publisher, they've been great, haven't they? They've been doing like a podcast <laughs> and online <laughs> launches. And stuff. And they were challenged in lots of ways. Um, they pulled the stops out for all of us that came out this, you know, in this period and done their level mm. best to promote us and give us opportunities and make us feel all right about what we're doing. Uh, so I do think they've been quite heroic, really, in this period. Yeah. And they're still at it and still working really hard. And, and given yeah. that two of them and like they pointed out today I think in a tweet um, that they're not a big organisation it's literally two people working really hard uh, making it seem as though they're a gigantic operation but they're not yeah. you know so yeah they are incredible yeah hats off to them I think definitely yeah. if they're out there absolutely <laughs> yeah cool um, so, do you fancy doing a couple of poems from, well, I was going to say from the collection, but uh, it's entirely up to you what you do. Well, like it's... I might as well use this opportunity to promote. And also I thought that, because my poems are quite short, I thought I'd do them in batches of two, if that's all right with you, Matt. Um, of course, yeah, whatever you want to do, yeah. Might pace it a bit better. Um, cool. So start with i'm just gonna show the book and i'm gonna start with the title poem because matt said he liked it so you've got to be nice to your host um, <laughs> so this first one's called happiness fm happiness is a radio station you chance upon that plays music so sublime you are immediately transported next day you try to find it but no matter how long you scan the airways, it's drowned by crackling interference. Sometimes you hear snatches in the background. So you try and try again and again and again and again until you realize that only fate decides the frequency of happiness FM. And some people have better reception than others. Thank you, that's the first one. Uh, this second one um, seems like a million years ago, but I was on holiday in Montenegro and I became sort of fascinated um, by this group of Russian women that I saw on the beach every day. So this poem is for them and it's called With the Babushkas on the Beach. <laughs> Behold, the babushkas on the beach bear billowing bellies like basking belugas in bitty bikinis. Blousy brash babushkas boast brimful braziers abreast broad backs. Bellowing bossy blessings beguiling this bulging bashful Brit. Bravo! Beautiful brazen babushkas. Bye bye, rusty, bountiful, bonkers, babushkas. Thank you. <laughs> That's the first two. <laughs> no, love that. That's great. Ah, so how long was um? So the pamphlet Happiness FM. Uh, that's your debut, uh, publication. Is that right? It, it is indeed. Yes. Yes. Um, so you started performing roughly 10 years ago. Even you've been writing poems since you were four. So how much of the content? Um, yeah, I was Sorry, when I started. So a very, very late starter. Um, but I've had a, a wonderful 10 years. And, um, you know, I think I've been really lucky um, in the timing in some respects because I've met some really lovely people. There's been this great explosion of poetry in the meantime. And it's been much easier, I think, to be a women poet than it was when I was younger. So yeah. things, I think, you know, so I'm quite glad in the end it happened the way it did. Um, but I've always written. I just looked on it as a hobby before. I never really took myself seriously. And right. there's a lesson in that, actually, is, you know, for anyone out there that isn't taking themselves seriously and wants to, you know, just do it. Go for it. It's never too late to do it, really. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mm, yeah, but I did, um, 
you know, I've had people who've helped me and boosted my confidence and bang said the gun and, uh, you know, that I've, I've just been really lucky, I think, with the people I've met. Yeah, it's such a wonderful community, isn't it? The poetry community, like it's, it's it really is, like you say, yeah. Bang said the gun and Michael Bolger, Poetry Takeaway, people like that. It is wonderful. Yeah, the I'm... support network and, you know, yeah. And and really inclusive, I think, and um, just I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being, you know, I'm, I really genuinely have met some very very nice people, so um, yeah, it's a, it's a boon, it's lovely, lovely to. Yeah. Mm. So the the content in Happiness FM is that all quite recent, or is that sort of stuff yeah. from that ten year period, or and Bob's really, um, nothing that old. I've practically binned everything I wrote uh, to begin with. Um, but, um, no, so it, it's a variety, really. You know how it is. Sometimes a poem is just an idea or a sentence and it sits there for 10 years and you pick it up and you think, well, maybe I'll do something with that. Um, yeah. But I do sort of, um, I go to, um, for the last four years or five years even, I've been doing um, at least one course at the poetry school because I find that I need it slight English homework. If I don't have that, I'm quite self-motivated, but I'm much better if I've got a deadline and, you know, yeah. want me to do it and they're expecting me to do it. So um, I've, so some of it came from that and some of it just came all, from all over the place. Who knows where poems come from, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. If you find out, let us know, won't you? But yeah, no, I know a deadline is a writer's best friend, like, without a doubt, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, yeah, yeah, I mean, some people are very diligent, but, you know, I just need that extra, extra sort of push, really. Um, yeah. Definitely. Cool. Um, great, well, do you fancy sharing a couple more? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll do a couple more for you. Um, um, this next one's called Ice Gems, and for anyone that doesn't know, what an ice gem is they're uh, these little biscuits with icing on top yeah and when i was little i really really wanted them uh so this poem's called uh, ice gems it wasn't fair that my mother disapproved of ice gems even though she fed us lard which wasn't fair it wasn't fair, I had to beg her every single day so that when she finally gave in, she was cross, which wasn't fair. It wasn't fair that as I opened the packet, it burst open and they all landed on the pavement, which wasn't fair. <laughs> it wasn't fair to have to see those beautiful biscuit baubles just lying there. It wasn't fair that the top ones were untouched and my mother told me to just leave them. So I screamed and I shouted that it wasn't fair and I got myself in a state. My mother ripped my face between her hands and she shouted, Life isn't fair! <laughs> and I said, oh, because up until then, she had led me to believe that it was, which wasn't fair. Thank you. This next mm -hmm. one, uh, just an absolute pure piece of whimsy. I like art and I like artists and I, I just wondered randomly what would happen if Picasso had to share a house with other artists. So this mm. poem's called, It's All Gone Picasso. <laughs> Gilbert and George are in their rooms inspecting bits of poop and that bloody Andy Warhol has taken all the soup. The place is like a pigsty. Tracy Amin's gone to bed. Van Gogh's experimenting with self-harming in the shed. Damien's breeding butterflies. Darley's melted the clocks. Gauguin and Toulouse Lautrec have gone and got the pox. Matisse has all the scissors. Can he really need them all? Degas has ballerinas pirouetting in the hall. Turner's gone all sulky. Holman Hunt just rants. Dante Gabriel Rossetti 
needs to keep it in his pants. <laughs> Pizarro hates Pollock. Rembrandt can't abide Vermeer. Bansy just pops in and out and only shows his rear. Of course, we all love Frida. I myself have tried, but that hothead Leonardo had to take the fight outside. This place is worse than Guernica, as I for one should know. I'm off to found the Cubist movement. Adios, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. Love that. <laughs> That's what I love about poetry. It can just, it's just take such a, like the images and the players on words and the, yeah, it's just beautiful. I love that. Yeah, I like that, quite the fact that you can just do anything you like, really. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You can take an idea and just twist one bit of truth and suddenly it unravels like a whole universe. Yeah. And Lou and Vic both love that as well. You're getting great comments, so... Yeah, oh, quality. And it really hard, forgive me, like to look at the comments and do it as well. You know? No, yeah. I will of course. It's all right. I'll feed them back to you. That's my job. Don't worry. <laughs> but um, yeah, 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 that's the thing I quite often find. Oh God, I haven't looked at the I haven't looked at the comments. But thank you for your comments. Thank you for your <laughs> comments. And lovely to see I can see some of the people that are here so high. Really yeah, yeah. Coming. That's the one down. The one downside with Zoom in it, you don't see the interaction. Even if it's live on Facebook, you sort of don't. Yeah. At least on Instagram, you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get the comments, and you can get a general idea because you see you know, the things floating up in the air. And yeah, yeah. So I sort of acknowledge that. Thank you very much. For... Oh no, no, not at all. Like it's, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's all good. You're doing. You're doing great. Like Thank so. Um. Are you working on anything? I know that Happiness FM only came out in April, like so. But I'm just curious: Are you working on anything now, or are you taking yeah, a break from writing? I'm always writing. I do like to keep generating writing because I really enjoy the process. I mean, yeah. it's that the other bit of other people hearing it and getting published and all of that is is almost separate to actually yeah. the of the writing process when it when you feel it's gone well. And the fact that you can sort of walk around in a daydream and, um, you know, doesn't, while you're doing the ring, well, I'm still writing all of the time, you know, when I'm cleaning the toilet and stuff, I'm still writing yeah. in my head. So um, a lot of the time, that's where it happens and then getting it on the page is another stage. So yeah. it's interesting that everyone has a different process. Yeah, absolutely. And are you originally from... Uh, North West London, like have you always uh, lived around? I was really a South Londoner. I was brought up in a prefab off the Old Kent Road, in fact, and um, I migrated after about ten years of travel um, to uh, North London, and that's where I brought up my children, and that's right. where in Kentish Town, um, which I'm yeah, yeah. quite fond of Kentish Town. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's such a wonderfully vibrant and diverse area. And I just wondered if you feel that that's a big part of your poetic journey, you know, being in such a stimulating place like that. Well, I think that you're always um, influenced by, in, directly and indirectly, by everything that happens to you, really. Um, yeah. but I, think, I think living in Kentish Town, um, it's very grounding, actually, because it is still got a mix. They keep trying to gentrify it. They really try hard. But somehow <laughs> it falls through the cracks and it's still Kentish Town. Um, it remains to be seen what the current sort of round of shop closures and stuff will do to us. Um, mm. But at the moment, it's still got that vibrancy and it's still got a lot of characters. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know well, nice, it's a nice bit of London. We're lucky, really. Um, yeah, it is. Because whereas Camden has got a bit spoilt now, definitely, I think, Kentish Town has still managed to hold on to its identity, which is quite yeah. special. Um, yeah, absolutely. Great place to live. I was just thinking like, as a poet, like, it's such a wonderful spot. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Quite a few poets, yeah. Which can, uh, the trouble is no one can afford to live here, so <laughs> it's dwindling, yeah. you know, yeah, and that would be very sad if that happens. But... Um, we're hanging on by our fingernails, sort of like the stay in the air, yeah. not be priced out. Well, we've got 10 minutes to go. So if, yeah. if you've got any other poems to read, that'd be wonderful. Uh, I ain't going to rush you and also I ain't going to put you off. I'm just sort of letting you know. 
I love poems. So, um, I've so got time for three. I probably have got time for three. Yeah. A very, very short one. If you want to do three, absolutely. I won't cut you off. It's fine. Yeah, no, that, uh, I won't go over time. Um, but so this next one, um, it's one of my favourites because um, I did it when I, I wrote it when I was um, in a poetry residency at a children's nursery. So that's very, you know, children between three and five. And as part of the activities that we that I did, I collected um, questions from parents and staff that children had asked that they found really difficult to answer um, because the minds of three to five year olds are very special and um so i've got quite a few of them and these um i distilled some of them into a poem and this is called i don't know go and play <laughs> where does the green go in winter why doesn't water have bones when will it be yesterday when is a puddle a pond how far can you go under? How far can you go up? Why is the moon broken tonight? Where do bubbles go when they pop? Are two of anything the same? Is a spider's web its home? Why is the rain going sideways? Why are snails so slow? Can a tomato kill you? How many years old is snow? Has anyone counted all the stars? Where did my shadow go? What keeps the sky from falling down? Why can't I see my own eyes? I really, really need to know if my apple is dead or alive. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, nice. Call it that. This next one, um, during lockdown, we were all being told to be mindful. I don't find mindfulness that easy. Uh, so I wrote this poem, which is called Lion Mind. A therapist told me I had a dog mind, that my troubles are like bones that I chase, as if I have no choice other than to fret and worry them each in turn. Instead, he said, Cultivate a lion mind. No matter how many bones are thrown around, the lion will simply sit and stare, keeping its eye on the bigger picture. The bones are merely incidental to the lion in the light of bigger prey. Next day, I arrange myself in a comfortable pose. Leonine, I consider my problems. I am non-judgmental and composed, determined to cut them down to size. My troubles simply glare back at me and do not diminish in importance or impact. I am still chasing bones. Later on, there is pizza. I make sure I have the lion's share. Q. Class. That's great, is that? Thank you. And also, you loved, um, the last poem you did about the children's questions got some great responses, and uh, Vic yeah. was saying it would make a great illustrated book as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, actually, um, I've got some colleagues I used to work in early years, and they, they are, you, you know, it's been used as to, to train um, nursery workers and things like that to, you know, um, really? help them to think about how children think. So that's quite nice. It's had another oh. function as well as just a poem. Um, oh, so I did the last one then, it's very, very short, um, because I'm, I'm actually 71 this year, which seems awful, but, um, and I never write about age, so I've, um, I've written one little poem, and this is my definitive poem on ageing, and it's called On Ageing. Yeah. Cool. The years have hit me like a truck, for getting stuff, and getting stuck. So many hairs I ought to pluck. The creams they sell are mainly muck. Once thought about a nip and tuck in case they see and mutter, yuck. Now more inclined to sit and cluck. Wrinkles seem to run amuck. Not really sure. I give a fuck. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, on the word possible. <laughs> 
That was great. <laughs> Thank oh, you very much for having me. So, how are you doing? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, gosh, it goes so quick. Goes it does, quick. it flies by, <laughs> doesn't it? It really does. But, um, yeah, I, I try my best to make it as, as relaxed as possible and it just whizzes by. No. So, your copies of Happiness FM, uh, do you have them on your website or do we got a burning eye? I, I can put it in the comment box. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Um, okay. Oh no, because I've got a link, and if you buy from me, yeah, then I will donate my profit to Centre Point Emergency Fund. Oh, lovely! That's great. People. So that's a, an incentive to buy from me. Sorry, it just take me a while to. No, no, and I, I'll um, I'll I'll share that link on Twitter and Facebook as well, obviously. And Thanks. when I upload this afterwards to YouTube, I'll include it in the comments, and that's so that everyone's got it. That's cool. Sorry, take so, yeah. a while because the autocorrect keeps changing it. <laughs> it's a nightmare typing the URL with autocorrect. Um, you've had some great comments from Ian, uh, Ian Winter, and uh, Michael Bulge of a Poetry Takeaway, uh, and lots of nice digital love hearts and stuff. Um, so yeah, for anybody who didn't get that, if you buy it direct from Mary, Mary's going to share a link. Uh, the profits go to Centre Point East, did you say? No, Centre Point, um, it's the Emergency Fund, Coronavirus Fund. Centre Point is a charity right. for young people, a, a London-based charity for young people. Um, yeah. So yeah, I decided that I would, like, anything that I, any profits that I made from the book, I would, um, I would, uh, yeah, donate to them. So that's Wonderful. So happiness.bigcartel.com. That's it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mary. You've been absolutely wonderful. I've loved hearing your poems and you've had a great response on here as well. So I'm really chuffed that you agreed to do it. Thank you very um, for having me, Matt. That was really enjoyable. And, um, my yeah. pleasure. And hopefully I'll be able to buy you a drink for your birthday. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. Oh, I don't know. Well, I can live in hope. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Possibly. We'll see. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for keeping you. the poetry flag flying as well which you have been doing i think i'll try my best <laughs> thank you right. take care uh, uh, so that was the wonderful uh, mary dickens give mary a follow and check out happiness.bigcartel.com to buy a copy of happiness fm uh, next week we're back 7 30 to late with sharina lee Satie, who is a wonderful poet from bradford uh, making great waves across the country. Um, has got a collection coming out on Verve Poetry Press soon, so he's really one to look out for. Um, so yeah, thank you, Mary. Thank you, uh, everybody watching. Uh, my name's Matt Abbott. We are Nims and Fugs. Next week, 7.30. Cheers. Yeah.